Today we're gonna fillet some fish. You have two types of fish by shape. You have what we call the round fish, like this one. Then over here, you have what we call your flat fish. The amount of fillets that you're gonna get from a flat fish will be four, two per side, one over, one over here, one over here, and then two on the other side. Now for your flat serve, for your round fish, you're gonna have two, one on each side. Now whenever you're buying fish, you wanna check if the fish is fresh or not. There are different ways to do that. Number one would be the smell. If it smells funky or if it smells like ammonia, if it smells weird, then probably it's old. Next is you wanna check the gills of the fish. If they're red like this, then they're good to go. But if you have something that is a bit more gray, like this one, then probably they are a bit more on the older side. The next thing you need to look at is the eyes of the fish. If they are red and sunken, then they are not fresh. But if they are full and bright like this one, then they are probably more on the fresh side. Next thing you need to look at is the color and the, the appearance, overall appearance of the fish. If they are bright, if the color is right, then you have a good fresh fish. A okay, fish storage, you keep your fresh fish on top of ice um, with a self-draining container. Now this has been sitting here for about five minutes so some of the ice have been melted. And in the freezer, if you're gonna serve them whole, you can keep them in the freezer at around negative 18 to negative 24 degrees Celsius. But if you're gonna serve them whole, then you freeze them whole. But if you're, you cannot like fillet or process them after freezing, the integrity of the fish is not gonna be as, uh, as nice as it used to be. Now, if you wanna scale the fish, you can get a fish, uh, fish scaler or you can always use the back of your knife. In this case, we're not gonna, uh, we're not gonna scale the fish since we're gonna remove the skin anyway. But to do this, just get a fish scaler or the back of your knife under running water, then just try to remove the scales until they're all gone. Again, running water so that they don't go all over the place. But anyway, let's move here and fillet our fish. Now, first things first, you want to have a very sharp knife, either a big knife for a big fish or a small knife for delicate tasks. Grab the fins and then you want to angle the knife towards the head. And then just make an incision so you get more of the meat and less of the bone or less of the head. Right there. All right, that's okay, good. Do that on the other side as well. Okay, now once you reach the head, just put the back of your knife, the heel of the knife, onto the spine and then just pound it down. Take this out. That's for, for the boys or for Siniga or whatever. Try to remove any leftover guts if there's any. Don't want that. And try to keep your section as clean as possible. Next, you wanna fillet the fish. Make an incision at the spine, angle the knife towards that spine. Big fish, big scales, it's gonna be much more tougher, thicker skin. Then just carefully Peek the tip of your knife always at the bone, not on the meat, like that. Then once you reach this stage, sorry, I cannot focus that on the camera. You're gonna notice that there is some bones that you need to sever or to cut right over there. You can just Angle the knife again towards those bones. Okay, 
then you have one fillet done. And you do it again on the other side. This one's gonna be much more easier because you have a much more stable fish. But the orientation of the fish is gonna be more awkward. And this fish is thick. Now your fillets are not yet fillets. You still need to remove any bones in there. So you have two sets of bones, one here in the middle, and then one here on the lateral side of the fish. Just try to angle the knife towards those bones and then just trim it off. And then you can use some pliers or you can use some um, tweezers to remove any bones. Just try to feel the bones where they are so you can see that they are over here, there. Just um, poke or sorry, pinch it. And then you want to pull uh, along the, um, the grain of the fish then so that you don't take too much of the meat and then just pull it out right there. Then do it again on the other pin bones. Yep. Now, you can always use something a bit more heavy duty. You don't really have to buy expensive tweezers like this. Try to feel any pin bones. Once you can't feel any, then you can start filleting. Okay, when removing the skin of the fish, or when skinning your fish, you always want to have something that can grip onto your, uh, the skin of the fish. Now make a tag over here. Just make a tag right there, just a small incision. Angle the knife towards the skin. Move the fish onto the edge of the table. Then grab that piece of tag. And then you wanna pull the skin and you wanna keep the knife steady while you're jiggling the skin of the fish. So you have skin off and you have a clean fillet like that. Any scales you wanna remove, you don't wanna serve that to the customers or you don't wanna eat that. So try to be meticulous when it comes to cleaning or checking the fish. Again, double check if you still have some pin bones and then try to make it neat or look, make it look neat. And there you go. You have a clean fillet of white fish. Okay, flat fish this time. Now, almost same process, but you have to take note that you get two fillets per side as compared to your round fish, which you get one fillet per side. Again, same, make an incision at the back of the fins. Like that. Then, sorry, I have to do it this way. Then you wanna make an incision at the middle of the fish. So you're gonna start filleting your fish from the middle instead from instead on the uh, the spine of the fish. Then you wanna use something a bit more smaller, much more agile type of knife. And then you just wanna do the same thing. Angle the knife towards the bone while taking a peek of what you are slicing. I'm gonna Move it this way so you guys can you guys can see. Again, tip of the knife onto the bone. It's gonna be much more easier on the other fillet since you have more space to work with. Okay. 
one. So that is one piece. Then you do the same on the other one. Again, make sure that the knife is only touching the bone or more on the bone. That's your other piece. Now to do the other side, you're just gonna do the same. Make an incision at the back, make an incision in the middle, and then start removing the um, fillet. Okay, you trim this off, or trim this, by again, angling the knife downwards, removing anything you don't wanna eat. So it's much more Wendy wasteful compared to the uh, the other fish or the the round fish and it's a bit messy because of the scales but don't worry we're just gonna we're just gonna wash this off you're gonna have a bit of a challenge once you have something like this there are some bones over here and some bones over there just try to again make a tag and then angle the knife towards the uh, parts that you don't want to eat and try to remove more of that, then trim that off. Do the same thing over here. I think that looks like a skirt. You can remove that so your fish looks more pretty. There, ready for skinning. Okay, we're gonna try to skin the fish. Same procedure, make a tag at the tip of the fish, the tail side, and then grip it, and then try to pull. Okay, wait, okay, there. Try to pull the skin, making sure that your knife is steady. Then, there you go, fillet of fish. Okay, two types of fish, different kinds of fillets. Round fish, you have one on both sides, and then you have four on your flat fish, two big ones, and then two small ones. Remember, safety points when it comes to filleting or processing any type of meat, make sure that everything should be dry, so you have more grip on the fish and you have more grip on your knife. Make sure everything is clean, you clean as you go, don't be lazy. Um, Another thing, you want to cut in between the joints and you want the tip of the knife always towards the bone so you get more of the uh, meat and less of the bone. And that's it. Keep everything nice and your food's going to be nice. Flatfish, we're just going to portion them so we have nice ones for our uh, fish and chips. We're just going to make this into long strips like... So, yeah, one, two, three. Do the same thing on the other one. Just make sure you have the same thickness. This one you can get, again, three. Then this one you can get three as well, since it's quite thick. Now again, same with the potatoes. It doesn't matter if you have some short ones or rounded ones. As long as you have the same thickness. And this one you can get too. Next, your round fish. You can do the same. This one you can get more from one fillet. One, two, three, and four. And this one you can get five. I 
Again, I just want same thickness so that they will cook at the same time. Okay, your potatoes should be about one centimeter in thickness. And the length will vary depending on the length of your potato. So take that, take out the potato out of the water. And then you wanna make your first one centimeter slice. Like that. So you have a flat surface to make your potato stable. Next, you wanna do another one centimeter, then one centimeter, and try to get another centimeter. Now, if you have flat surfaces like this, it doesn't matter. A French fry is a French fry. It doesn't matter what the shape is as long as the thickness are consistent. So you do your one centimeter slices, put them back in the water so they don't oxidize. Then you do it again, one centimeter. Now, for the middle part, these are the ones that are gonna be much more consistent in thickness. You stack them up. Just make sure that you only stack up pieces that are more stable and much more secure for you so you don't cut yourself, they don't slide. And do your one centimeter again. One centimeter, then one centimeter. Once you reach the end of the, uh, the pieces, if you have a bit more than one centimeter, it doesn't matter because if you're gonna cut this into a perfect one centimeter thickness, that would be perfect, but you're gonna be ending up with something like this, which is less than a centimeter thick, and that's gonna burn before these potatoes are cooked. Put them back in the water and then finish all your potatoes. Okay, we're gonna make your batter for your fish. Now, on this one, you have to have two separate types of eggs, egg whites and then egg yolks on the batter itself. For your egg whites, we're gonna make basically a meringue. So what you do is get your, get a bowl, put your egg, egg whites in, and then just whisk as fast as you can. This would be ideal for the single guys out there or the married women. Very, very easy for you guys. You know, I wanna reach, I wanna reach about medium peaks. You don't want to overdo it or else it's going to break. Just take a whisk if it holds up like that. Medium to hard peaks would be good. So our meringue's ready. Now all we have to do now is switch to your other bowl, which has the flour and the three egg yolks for one recipe. And we're going to mix that with beer. Now, you don't really have to use a whisk in this one. You can use just a regular wooden spoon or in this case, a rubber spatula. For the beer, I'm using Cerveza Negra. You can use Pale Pilsen if you want to, but you don't wanna go any lighter than that. So the beer is gonna provide the aeration and the liquid for our batter. There are different recipes for beer batter. In this case, it's just regular beer plus flour, egg yolks, and your meringue. So it's very basic. If it's too thin, like this one, you can always add a bit of cold water just to thin it out. Remember, you want this to coat the fish, so you don't want it too thin, but you don't want it too thick wherein it looks kind of weird. So any lumps in there is all right. It's like your pancake batter. Pancake batter is all right with lumps because it's gonna introduce a bit more of interesting um, texture onto your batter. Once you have that, we're gonna mix in your meringue. We're gonna do this in three batches so that we don't burst a lot of those bubbles. Now you wanna fold this. By folding means to take a bit of the mixture and then gently putting it above the meringue. This will ensure that more of the bubbles are kept intact. Once that's fully incorporated, you're gonna add in another third of your meringue. Then again, you fold it in. 
So you have a very airy batter as compared to earlier. Once all of that is in, you want to give or to put all your meringue in. And your beer batter is ready. Okay, so you want the temperature of your oil to be at blanching temperature. That is 130 to 150. Okay, we're at 133. Let's maintain the heat to a stable one. So 134, 136, we're good to go. Then we're gonna move on over here where we season the fish. So season the fish, salt. I'm just putting salt, I'm not putting pepper. If you wanna put pepper, that's fine. And then we're gonna add in some lemon juice. Then give that a good mix. Now, I'm gonna dedicate one hand for wet and one hand for dry. Now, onto your wet, sorry, onto your dry, I should say, you have flour, which I'm gonna season as well. So dry would be flour. And then, then your batter, we're gonna season with a bit of vinegar. And then we're gonna put in now your dredged fish. So when dredging, remember to remove any excess flour or else your batter's not going to stick. Make sure it's fully coated. So then we can put like two to three, maybe depending on the size of your pot. Okay, make sure to remove any excess batter and then onto your blanching liquid. Make them swim first so that they don't stick at the bottom and then release. Maybe you can get two at a time, maybe three. Yeah, maybe two. And then you want to cook the inside part of your, of your battered fish with less browning or no browning at all. The idea is you want to cook them at first fry and then you want to brown and crisp them up at the second fry. So whenever you're frying, you want to check all that bubbling, that is steam coming out. And the initial, initial bubble that, was, that will come out on the initial fry will be a lot. When that subsides, that means that the inside part of your fish is already cooked. That means the moisture is already drawn out and you want to take them out. Remember, you're not browning or you're not cooking them here. You want to maintain the temperature at 130 to 150 and you don't want to crisp them up. They're still, they're still soft. Yeah, they're not, they're not warm. Sorry, they're not crisp at all. You take them out while still, while still cooking and then set them on a tray lined up with thin paper towels so that it will absorb a lot of the oil. Okay, next would be your fries. You're gonna do the same, 130 to 150. And in they go. You don't wanna fully cook them. Sorry, you wanna fully cook them, I should say, but you don't want to brown them. So at lower temperature, your fries are gonna be good to go, but not yet good to serve. You don't want to overfill your pot with oil or else it's gonna overflow. And you don't want um, more than enough food on your pot or else again, it's going to overflow. So you wanna have some allowance for your food when and it comes to heating up your oil. Plus the oil is going to expand once you heat it up. So take note of that as well. So we're gonna wait about two to three or maybe five minutes max tops until your potatoes are cooked. Just check them every now and then. Just wanna feel if the bubbling subsides or your potatoes are already soft. Okay, when the bubbling subsides, you wanna check maybe one piece if 
potato circle. You don't have to touch them. If you're not used to touching hot food, just get a, get a spoon or get a fork. Check if they bend and they're good to go. Or if you think that when you eat them, they're cooked, take them out. As you can see, there's no browning yet. Again, this is just the initial cooking. Take them out, put them on a tray with some paper towel on it so that it will absorb a lot of those excess oil. Okay, tartar sauce. Before we make our tartar sauce, we're gonna make mayonnaise. Now mayonnaise is one of your um, mother sauces. It's basically a combination of oil and um, egg yolk. So those are two immiscible liquids or two immiscible substances. That means they are not naturally like meant to be mixed, but with the help of an emulsifying agent like your lecithin in your egg yolk or your mustard. This is Dijon mustard, by the way. It's going to help these two to get emulsified. So we start with two egg yolks and a dab of mustard. So this is going to be half a recipe. Give that a good mix. You're going you're gonna to whisk this until it becomes a bit more foamy, or we call that um, in kitchen language, uh, ribbon stage. Okay. Once you have everything a bit foamy, you're gonna introduce a bit of oil. Just a couple of drops to start. You don't wanna add too much or else it's going to split. Then, on a steady stream, you're gonna add in more. Okay, you wanna do this until it starts to separate. That's the stage wherein your oil is no longer mixing with the mixture or it starts to get too thick. You wanna introduce a bit more um, cold water in there since it's a, it's a cold emulsion, technically. You want to keep everything a bit more on the colder side. So introduce a bit of cold water and then bring back the oil. So it's not your healthy type of sauce. It's, it's like 90 to 80 percent oil. One egg yolk can hold up to around 200 to 250 ml of canola oil. You wanna use a neutral flavored oil. You don't wanna use olive oil for this one. It's too, it's too strong. And you don't wanna use anything that is not in liquid form at room temperature or else your mayonnaise is going to split. So at this stage, it's starting to look more like mayo. Okay, the next thing you do now is taste it. You wanna season before you add salt, before you add acid, you wanna taste your mayonnaise. You do not want your mayonnaise to be too salty. Remember, we're gonna add in more flavors in there for a tartar sauce. There's a lot of jerkins, there's a lot of onions, eggs, etc. So it's gonna be more on the saltier type of ingredients. Now, you want this to be as much as possible bland, but not tasteless. Okay, can add in a bit of salt. You can add in a bit of pepper in there, you can add in Worcestershire sauce if you want to, but salt and acid is important, salt and lemon juice. And mayonnaise is done. Okay, now tartar sauce. Your tartar sauce has the following ingredients. You have some eggs. These are hard-boiled eggs, so we boil them 10 minutes starting in boiling water, and then uh, put them in ice water to stop the cooking process. And then you're gonna cut this into about roughly one centimeter cubes. And then we have, if you don't have chives, get some spring onions, or if you don't have spring onions, you can always get some regular onions, which we're gonna chop finely. So brunoise, we're not gonna put much, too strong. 
Then we're gonna add in some gherkins or your pickles. Again, same, roughly chop half centimeter to one centimeter slices. I'm gonna put a lot since I like gherkins. You can always put less if you don't want to, or if you don't want it, all of it. Then we're gonna add in some fresh chopped parsley. Okay. Give that a good mix. And then we're gonna introduce your mayonnaise. You wanna put your mayo into your mixture, not your mixture into your mayo, so you can control how much mayo you need. Now, you're not gonna put too much. You want just everything to be combined together, so your mayonnaise is going to be your glue for everything. You want it chunky. You don't want it to be like a, like a soup or a syrup. You don't need much. That right there is enough. Then we taste before we season again. Okay, way too bland. Need a lot of salt. And some lemon juice again. So remember, you're serving this with fish. So you want some acidity in there. You can always add pepper too. But for now, we keep it as is. And taste again. Good. Okay, so we have our oil up to 172. I think it's 172 or... As long as we're between 170 to 180, we're good to go. Browning occurs at 170 degrees Celsius. At this point, you want to add in now your fries for browning or we'll fries in okay now once your fries are crispy and brown then we take them out onto a bowl Now you want to season these while they're hot. If you can take out as much oil as you can, that would be great, but some of the grease are going to be left in the bowl anyway. Then we season these with, this is a combination of one part pepper, three parts salt. Salt in there and some parsley. Give that a good toss. Then you move on to your fish. Now fish can go in. Maybe we serve like three to four pieces per plate. Now this will be faster than your blanching again. Just want the outside part to be crispy. Okay, once they're brown and crispy, take them out. Again, on a container ready for seasoning. Again, with the same mixture, salt and pepper in while they're hot. Okay, we're gonna serve first with fries on the middle. Again, on the grease paper. Then your chips. Sorry, your fish, not your chips. On top. Like so. So those were the basics of frying and your fish or processing of your fish. We didn't go through the in-depth um, way of processing your fish since we only need like a couple of it or some of it for our dish today. Now, deep fat frying, always remember, you want to blanch big pieces of ingredients before deep fat frying. That means 130 degrees to 150 degrees Celsius. And you just want to cook them, but you don't want to brown them or crisp them up. And then you want to increase the temperature to 170 to 180 to brown and crisp up the outside part of your food. Now, um, a couple of safety 
key points when it comes to uh, deep fat frying. Always remember to not overcrowd your deep fat fryer. Make sure you have an allowance for the food and for the oil to expand when you're frying. Always clean the oil every after batch or every after frying so that the oil does not um, deteriorate rapidly. Next thing is potatoes. You want to peel and store them in, um, in, uh, sorry, in liquid or in water so that they don't oxidize. Um, and then I guess that's it. That's your battered fish with some mayonnaise. Oh yeah, mayonnaise. Mayonnaise, one egg per, sorry, 200 ml of oil per one egg yolk. And then you need some emulsifying agent there that's going to be your mustard and the lecithin in your egg yolk. Make a ribbon, drizzle in your oil very slowly at first and then gradually increase the stream to about medium until you consume all the oil. If needed, you wanna add in some ice cold water just to lower down the temperature so it won't split. Season with salt, pepper, and lemon juice, and then make sure it's not too salty since you're gonna add in other ingredients to make another uh, derivation of your mayonnaise. And that's it. Uh, deep fried fried fish, battered fish, french fry, remoulade sauce, mayo, deep fat frying, fish, and seafood, easy.